be talking about the conversation of forgiveness. And what I thought I would do is, since I had many of you this morning, what I thought I'd do is reiterate the three points I made this morning and expand on them in different ways, because I really think these three points are really critical for you in your future practice and for your practice now. So we're going to start with this conversation of what are you broadcasting? What are you broadcasting? This morning I talked about it. You're always giving off a signal. You're your own TV station. You're your own radio station. You are your own print magazine and newspaper, and you are giving off a signal. You're giving off a signal as a student. You're giving off a signal in your business. You are giving off a signal. Maybe your signal is that you're really, really nice. Maybe if you ever work in groups, you give off the signal that you'll do all the work and you won't complain. Maybe you're giving off a signal in your practice that when you come into my practice, I am on time and you will efficiently move in and out of my office. That could be a signal that you're giving off. So it has me ha think about my neighbor. I have this neighbor and his name is Bob. And he's one of those people. As soon as I see him, I got to whoosh up my body. I am so annoyed. I want to kill him. He's one of those people. You know, all of us have somebody like that, at least one in our life, like, oh, please don't come talk to me. <laughs> so that's Bob. Let me give you an example. And he lives right next door to me. I'll come outside to get the mail, and he'll go, good morning, Sean. That's how he talks. And I'll go, yeah, Bob, but it's 6 p.m. And he'll say, I know, but you look like you just got up. <laughs> Okay, so he really annoys me, all right. And if I look at this conversation of what are you broadcasting, this is a very important conversation to me. I'm kind of known in my industry for being very fun and playful, very straight talker. I, I put my heart on my sleeve. You're never going to guess what I'm thinking. And if it's a tough conversation, I'll be very gentle in having that conversation and even asking permission if I can be really, really authentic. And is this a good time to do that? I'm known for that. I'm also known for when I'm angry, I will let you know I'm angry too. And doing it appropriately. Or if I'm really angry saying, you know what, honey, I'm so mad right now. I don't want to say anything I'm going to regret. Let me just go back. Go, let me just go debrief with myself. Take a deep breath so I can come back to the conversation. You know, um, I'm known for that. Now, if you were to go to Bob and ask him, what do I broadcast? <laughs> He'd say, oh, there's an angry woman. She, boy, she's so uptight and tense and annoyed. That would be his perception of me. And I've got a problem with that. So let's explore this conversation of what are you broadcasting. This morning I shared about it pretty deeply, about Archbishop Desmond Tutu. We did a little video that went viral. It went so viral that Archbishop Desmond Tutu now endorses us. And the essence of the video, it's called Project Forgive, is a really good friend of mine. His name is Gary Weinstein. His wife, Judy, and his two children, Sammy and Alex, 9 and 12, my children babysat those children, and Judy was my husband's business coach. I get a call one day that they were killed by a drunk driver. Tough day, really, really tough day. We were very enamored with this family, very active with this family, and it was a really tough day. And the day got tougher, because later on that day, I get a call telling me the man who killed them, his name is Tom Wellinger, is also another dear family friend. So juxtaposition got created. Here's Tom that killed our dear friends. He's in jail, appropriately so. When you drink and drive and you kill people, you go to jail. And at the same time, Tom is an amazing human, amazing father, both families amazing. And what a tragedy. Also, what a lot of people don't know that happened that day, I'm from Detroit, I live in Detroit, is Tom's family was flying in from Minnesota that day to do an intervention the next day for his alcoholism. So they were a day too late. Looking at that conversation and sharing that conversation in a video caused a lot of energy and caused a beautiful conversation on the conversation of forgiveness. The conversation has grown. We actually committed to making a movie. So we got a movie that's launching in April on PBS. It's really cool. I'm a documentarian by trade. So the movie's launching in April, but it got much bigger than I ever anticipated. Today, we're reaching up to 30 million a month in social media. 
a month. Yesterday, we got Dr. Oz. Let me just do that another. We got Dr. Oz yesterday. Really exciting stuff in causing this conversation. What are you broadcasting? Obviously, we're doing something beautiful and exquisite in the conversation of forgiveness that would create this kind of energy or attraction, right? Here's another example. What are you broadcasting? I just don't know how to stop this one. Just hit the red button, maybe? Let's try it. Well, I'll come back for it. I'll figure it out later. So when you look at this video, like you're watching it, and you're like, well, dang, that's kind of cool, cool, the lizard on the iPhone, blah, blah, blah. But to the lizard, it's no big shake. The lizard is just sucking ants or bugs. That's what they do, right? And how many times in life, when you look at what people broadcast, they're doing something amazing, and you look and you go, dang, how are you doing that? And then for yourself, maybe you're a single mom going to school. Any of those in the room? Single mom going to school? Or you're taking care of parents. You're taking care of parents. And that's just what you do. You just get up every day and you do what you got to do. And other people might say to you, oh my gosh, that's so amazing that you do that. Because to other people, what you're broadcasting is pretty darn cool. All right. What are you broadcasting? We're going to look at new perceptions. Let's say bye to lizard. Bye, lizard. All right, new perceptions. Shared this quote today by Proust. I got, oh, I don't know how to make it go backwards. Can somebody help me? Oh, it went back. Okay. The real voyage, voyage of dis thank you. The real voyage of discovery consists not in seeking new landscapes, but in having new eyes. So this morning we played a lot in marketing and getting new eyes and looking at marketing, social media, traditional media a little bit differently. And of course I use this example, which is my conversation of gossip. Pinky swear I'm getting a PhD in gossip. I'm about to defend. There's about a hundred of us in the world that have a PhD in gossip. And when you think gossip, you think mean and nasty. No, research shows that mean, nasty stuff is only about 5 to 7%. Word of mouth is the best form of advertising on the planet. Oh my gosh, you've got to go to this chiropractor. He's going to get rid of your heel spur. You're going to be feeling like a million bucks. Oh my gosh, you just had knee surgery? Try cryoderm. Your pain is going to be 50% less. You're not even going to believe it. Oh my goodness. Have a conversation with Dr. Gilles Lamarche. He practices what he preaches. He's the most loving kind, exquisite human in the world, and we're so lucky to have him at Life University. All of that good, good, good gossip and good, good perceptions around looking at this conversation of gossip. I've got one more, because I am a media trainer. I teach people how to work with the media. This is what I do, and this is my favorite video of all time. <laughs> is that freaking funny or what? I think that's hysterical. And the thing is, most people, when I work with them, going about being on camera, is that's how you feel. Like, you look, you're like, oh my gosh! Right? And how do you get over that? A new perception around looking at yourself and seeing yourself as a leader and sharing in powerful, powerful ways. What are you broadcasting? New perceptions. And the third one we looked at this morning, there it goes again. Just make it go back for me. Thank you, Ricky and guys. The third perception is this conversation between love and fear. Like right now, I'm just being uncomfortable because I can't. I wish I would have had my little thing because I have mine that works, that I know how to work. And I have no glasses on, so I can't see it. Conversation, so I'm dancing in fear and discomfort. Dancing back and forth between these two conversations of love and fear, and I'm talking specifically about business, specifically about business. When you're at school, when you're at work, when things are going amazing at work or amazing on your team or amazing in your learning, there's collaboration, there's fun, there's freedom, there's authenticity. It's really, really cool. And when it's not in that place, it's all of that. All of that. And the, what's so cool about this conversation, and this is the conversation I had this morning, is that in this model, the conversation of fear is a good one. New perceptions can alter your destiny. New perceptions can alter your destiny. Fear is good. Because you grow and learn, as you grow and learn, you're always going to be stepping in fear. You saw several speakers talking about this conversation of fear. 
right? Going into practice, there's going to be moments you're like, oh, crap, well, how do I do that? Oh, crap, I need to hire somebody. Oh, crap, I need to learn how to do my books. There's going to be many moments of that. And there's going to be many mistakes. There's going to be many moments of doubt and, con and perfectionism and lack. And how do I do this? And the, the speaker before, she taught, saw him talking about cash flow. You're going to go in and out of cash flow all the time until you master that abundance. It takes mastery and time to master abundance. And it's going to be uncomfortable in times. The connector between these two is this conversation of forgiveness. The connector between these two is a conversation of forgiveness. Because when you take a risk and it's not perfect, when you can grieve your losses and forgive yourself for it not being perfect, then you can go back over to the love space. The game is to be in the love space much more, like when you're actually adjusting a patient or working with a patient if you're not an actual doctor. That's the love space. That's where the magic really happens. And you've got that down, and you're learning that as students to get that part down. It's the, all the other parts of business that are going to cause you to have a conversation of taking a risk, forgiving yourself for not doing it perfect, so you can go back to this love space. Every single student in here needs to know who this man is. His name is Seth Godin. Sign up for his blog. He is the best marketing trainer in the universe. He's my hero. And he talks a lot about fear and paralysis. The only way to get rid of the fear is to stop doing things that might not work, to stop putting yourself out there, to stop doing work that matters. Fear is the enemy. Fear is not the enemy. Paralysis is the enemy in this conversation of fear. Now, with that said, I want to explore a little bit more with those three put out there for you. I want to explore this conversation of forgiveness. Forgiveness has five stages. Forgiveness has five stages. So. When I look at these stages, you might think that it's a linear process that you move through each one. Okay, um, it might happen fast, it might happen slow. You get, uh, you're in your car and somebody cuts you off. You might go through this very, very, very quickly. Shock, like, oh, I can't believe he did that, what a jerk. Oh, my goodness, that scared me. Oh, oh, fine, it's fine, he's probably in a hurry. I'm, oh, okay, oh, good jam. Baby, I'm worth it. Right, it might look like that very quickly, right? That could be a very linear process, but most things in life are not a linear process. Like what if you're diagnosed with breast cancer? Shock, anger. Then maybe you have a moment of peace for the next day, you're very peaceful. Then the next day you're crying. Maybe you haven't experienced breast cancer or someone you, you know might have, but you can imagine, you can put fill in the blank what your experience might be for something like that. And so forgiveness, is a non-linear process. So looking at this conversation of forgiveness, I want to go back. What are you broadcasting? What are you broadcasting as a community of chiropractors in terms of forgiveness? As an individual in terms of forgiveness, what are you broadcasting? This was a big conversation this morning. You're not alone. You are not alone. You know, sometimes it feels like it when you start your practice. That's why it's so important as an alum to come back once you graduate, because there's gold here when you come back. The other conversation, of new, and this gives you a new perception, because you can lighten up and also ask for some help. And I love this conversation of lightening up. New perception. One of the speakers before us, I am sexy. I am sexy. I am so sexy. And really, this conversation of lightening up, and this is probably the most important one playing in this conversation of fear and love. It's accepting the apology you'll never receive. Accepting the apology you'll never receive. Now, I remember Bob had a problem with what I was broadcasting with Bob. It didn't work for me. How can I shift? No matter if he's doing it right or wrong, who cares? I just did not like who I was being with Bob. Are you with me? So we created this activity. It's what we do in our Leadership Foundation for Project Forgive. It's one of the activities we do. We do a lot of activities around forgiveness and compassion in the workplace, and this is one of them. And we came up with this idea that what would it be like or what would happen if Bob actually apologized? Like, 
verbally apologized. And if he did, what would he say? Now, he's not going to do this, you guys. It's not going to happen. Are you with me? But I'm in control of me. So when I see Bob, I imagine in my mind's eye that he actually apologized to me. And he says, Sean, I am so sorry. I am so socially awkward. I don't even know what to say most of the time. Everything that comes out of my mouth is so freaking dumb. <laughs> and I, I get tongue tied. I don't know what to say. And the truth is, I just truly want people to love me. I really wish that you would just love me. And for whatever reason, I just annoy people to death. And I'm so sorry. If I had the skills, I would do it better. Would you forgive me? Can you already feel the shift? Right? What is that shift that can happen? It's a practice. It's a mastery. And the question I have for you today, and this is what came up for me, is what if medical doctors, the medical community, apologized to the chiropractic community? What would they say? They're not going to do this. But this is about you and what are you broadcasting. What would they say? Would they say, this moves me. I have a medical doctor who's in this place of seeing my muscle testing and my supplements from Standard Process, which I love, <laughs> seeing me taking these supplements, saying, what are you doing? You're going to harm yourself. And I'm even at the point where I, I don't hide it from her. I just keep it from her because I'm going to do what I'm going to do, and she's really uncomfortable with it. What if those, that medical profession said, I'm so sorry, I can't see your brilliance as a community. I'm so sorry, I'm so hardwired with hard science. I don't even know what intuition is or innate ability. And I can't even connect with my patients because I don't have that skill. And I need to move in and out and I can't get emotionally attached or feel my patients like that. And I, I'm just so sorry that I don't refer you because I really don't get it. Will you forgive me? Will you forgive me? What kind of chiropractic world would it be if you were actually accepting the apology you never received from the medical community? You would not be blaming them anymore. You wouldn't even be giving them much energy. You'd just be focusing on you and what you're creating. Whatever you focus on expands. And the ultimate question becomes, what are you broadcasting? What are you broadcasting? Mwah.